Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. The legacy for Aussie-built, homegrown cars runs very deep in the veins for many thousands of Australians. This episode is a tribute to Australian manufacturing at its very best. Stick around because it's holden to the bone on this week's show. Outside of the Holden Museum here in Trafalgar, Victoria, around about a 125 kilometre drive east of Melbourne, and inside is a lovely guy that will welcome you to his home of the mighty Holden. Well, I'd like to welcome Classic Restos to our uh, to our museum. This is a fantastic thing to have you here, and uh, we just love our museum. Uh, we've got a, a remodified old butter factory. And all we've really done to it is uh, give it a good coat of paint and a, a really good spruce up. Uh, we started uh, this some four or five years ago. We actually started work five years ago on the, uh, on the on the factory itself to get it ready for our displays. And it's sort of just grown like topsy ever since. We absolutely love it. The place is staffed by volunteers and every one of them are enthusiasts. And uh, yeah, we just have a ball here. We're a little bit quirky, we like something a bit different, so we've got things like a Lloyd Hartnett, which is part of the Holden history. If we go back far enough, Holden were sort of into saddles and then they went on to motorbikes and then they moved on to motor car bodying. Holden in 1928 built 36,000 bodies in the one year for 45 or 46 different makes of motor car. So we're talking about not just models, not roadsters and tourers and so on and so on. We're talking about makes of motor car. And uh, that includes the, uh, the T model Ford in some of them uh, in the early days. So yes, we, uh, we've got a variety of stuff here that we just love to, to look at and play around with and love to talk about. Well, what does the Holden mean to me and to all of our volunteers, I would say, it is just Australian. It is what we are all about. It is the, uh, you know, we designed it, we built it, we had it. And when you look back on it, I, th I suppose what I love about the Holden is that it was all Australian. You could break down in the middle of the night anywhere in the country and the local chemist shop would give you somewhere, give you something to fix your car and get you going. When you look at the Holdens in the, in the early days, you know, you look at the the first that came out, we were talking about a motor car that could sit on 60 mile an hour all day, every day. And uh, even though that doesn't sound a lot when you're looking at 110 uh, kilometre zones, the roads were nothing like they are today. And you would belt along, along with, yeah, very skinny little tyres and, uh, you know, she would do it all the time, uh, totally reliably. Uh, they were a fantastic bit of, uh, of engineering and what I love about them was their, their reliability. There's only two things that can go wrong. One, the spark plug will pack up, which you can replace pretty easily, or you've run out of fuel. And uh, if you've got spark and you've got fuel, your Holden will go every time, guarantee it. Holden started as a saddle maker back in 1856. A young chap from England came over here. He'd had a blue with his stepmother and he arrived in Australia at the age of about 16. A few years later, he got a small inheritance from his mother's estate and started up a saddlery business. Now, his father was a saddler and a very, very good businessman. And uh, he started up the business and on it went from there. So Holden uh, started tin bashing in about 1900, where they were making sidecars for golding who was supplying the sidecars to Harley-Davidson. 
They then went on from there to manufacture their own design. And in about 1915, they bodied their first motor car, which just happened to be a Lancia. Uh, when you look at the, the very early Holden, it was basically a US design or a, a GM uh, designed and or large input into the design of the, uh, the very first Holden. When it came to producing it here, it was an all-Australian product with all-Australian people employing hundreds and then thousands and then tens of thousands of people. And it goes on, I think, what we've lost, you know, we look at Holden back in the 60s, they had 54% of the new car market. That is just a fantastic thing. And you think of all the people that were employed and employed because, you know, they say for every one job, there's a flow on of another five or six. And if you even conservatively say they were employing 4,000 people, that's 25,000 people nearly that have got a job purely because of Holden. I don't think there is anybody in Australia that, that hasn't been touched or any family that hasn't been touched significantly by the Holden brand in one form or another. I'm as proud as could be to, uh, to represent Holden here today and just have our museum representing everything and I would welcome anybody and everybody to come and have a look at what we've got here. It will really do the Holden uh, in you proud. Come and have a look and see what we're doing and uh, thank you very much. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same, even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. In 2019, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2019 Detroit tour with Fletch. 1300 146 392. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King Hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerymouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. How cool is this place? Turning up for work every day, you must love it, Neil. It's hard to stay in bed, I can assure you. It's really fantastic. We have a ball here. We've got probably 20 or 30 volunteers and they're all the same. We all bounce off one another and have a ball all day, every day. It's fantastic. Got to say this, you're such a lovely fella. Like, you're so inviting. You're so friendly uh, to anyone that walks through the door. And if you haven't been to Trafalgar, to this guy's museum, plan a little trip, whether it's an overnight trip or just a day trip from Melbourne or wherever you live, it's worthwhile the trip coming down and seeing what this guy has. On that note, with the way it's all gone and all these cars here parked up and preserved, you've really got a time capsule that is certainly very, very rare now in this country. Yeah, we certainly have, and I think it's going to get rarer the way uh, things are going, just generally with, well, Australian motoring all around. 
Uh, so yeah, we've uh, we've got something that's quite unique, and uh, hopefully when we get a we got a bit more uh, of an extension proposed, and that'll sort of bring back a lot of the really old history of Holden as well. So yeah, we love it, and uh, we're having a ball with it. So you've got a plan B for down the track now. Yeah, plan B is uh, the old Holden stuff back in the 1800s yeah. and sort of up and including World War II. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've got to bring that history out for everybody to see and it's just fascinating, really good Australian ingenuity and uh, can-do stuff. It's really fantastic when you look at it. It's kind of like as though General Motors Holden was on the tail end of the early success of Holden. Absolutely. Uh, the only reason Holden isn't Holden as such is because of the Great Depression. They were manufacturing a massive amount of uh, motor car bodies. Suddenly the Depression hit and they couldn't give them away and they sold out to General Motors. Mm. It's just a shame. It could have been an all-Australian story, but mm. that's the way it goes. It is the way it goes. Now, speaking of the way it goes and speaking of your contacts in the industry and uh, your ability to obtain these vehicles, we have something very special behind us. We have a one-off prototype from Holden, the Tirana. Neil, what's the story here? I can only tell you what little I know about it. It's a 2004 development. It's a one-off. It was going to be released as a, you know, a production run. There's some argument as to whether it was the uh, the GFC or whatever they called it, put the kibosh on it. But there's also a story that uh, you know people thought it would compete too much with the the Commodore. And as the GM at the time said, you know, Commodore's got enough competition as it is. Mm. Let's not give it any more. But yeah. it's a magnificent looking motor car. It's it is very Commodore though, isn't it? I, I, it would have been very interesting uh, to see how. Even the the name, the brand Tirana, to come back after all of those years, and even in 2004, it was still a, a lot of displacement in time since we saw a car made as a Tirana. I would think by the look of the car, it would have been a roaring success. I think Tirana's had a real soft spot in most Holden's hearts, mm. Holden lovers' hearts, anyway. And uh, yeah, I think it would have been a, a really sensational deal. The white interior, well, that might not be for everybody, but it certainly contrasts with the paint on the outside. When you sit in the car, it's it's like something that a stormtrooper would have driven off Star Wars. It's very, very white, Neil. Yeah, I'm not sure that would suit my grandkids, actually, but... Uh, Crayons. Yeah, but, uh, look, it's a concept car, so they could probably have done something a bit different. And Interesting to see the start button in the centre of Dash as well for 2004. Just amazing. The designers in Australia, when you go back and have a look at this, uh, and I go back to the Hurricane, which is another concept car they built, some of the features in that are just mind-blowing. You know, we're talking about, well, I don't know when the Hurricane was done. It was sort of 1980s sometime. No rear vision mirrors or cameras. All sorts of, you know, really fascinating stuff. I think what's interesting too with this prototype making it extra cool is knowing that it's a prototype with none of the the dials work they they're fixed in position here for the, for this prototype car but to see what they were thinking in the early 2000s and you know yourself with a prototype the drawings and designs would have been around a few years even prior to that so we could be we could be talking late 90s here we could well be yes it could well be late 90s and i think the design of this would stand up today in any sort of scrutiny. I think it's pretty game too to call it a Tirana back in the time and give it those sculpted back seats. Now that, now that is cool. I've, I've got to give points here for the seating in this car. The seats, if I was looking for this Tirana back in the mid 2000s, I think the seats would have sold me. Oh, I think there's a lot of features about this car that would have sold me. I'm a, I had a Tirana and an LC. Neil, the only thing that needs, the only thing you're sold on is H O L D E N, and you're gone, aren't you? I am. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It doesn't have a holding badge. It doesn't exist. Um, we look at the engine here now. The prototype based on the V6, uh, keeping, I guess, uh, in line with the early Tiranas only being available in six cylinders, or well, obviously uh, LX and LH had the, the V8 options back in the day, but originally our Tiranas had six cylinder engines, so do you think that was their, their thinking here with this? I would think so, yeah, very much so. I think the uh, it's a V6, uh, 3.6 litre, 
they was uh, compatible with, you know, or uh, similar to everything else that we were using, I think it would have been a, a real winner. Well, if you own a classic, it goes without saying, it just has to be insured with Shannon's. Why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646. And of course, if you have anything to do with a classic bike, classic car or a classic truck club, make sure that that is listed with the Shannon's Club for all the world to see. Find out more information when you visit shannons.com.au. Neil, there's no doubt about it. When you come to your museum, you're full of surprises. I know, essentially, it's a Holden Museum, but we've got a subsidiary product here, obviously, from the United States, being General Motors. The 1928 Buick Speedster. Later on in the decades, what about the Riviera boat tail? That it was around in 1928. 1928, that's exactly right. Probably the only boat-tailed uh, motor car Holden ever made. And this is a real special. It's, uh, it's got a V8 in there with triple SUs. Uh, it really goes, in fact, they claim it was clocked at 138 mile an hour. Now, I certainly wouldn't want to be in it at 138 mile an hour. Geez, you'd be hanging on. Oh, wouldn't you? Well, I didn't have a look at the brakes. Those little wire wheels, they'd be, uh, they'd, be, they'd be flexing a bit, wouldn't they, Neil? Just a little bit, I reckon. I wouldn't want to be there. But no. Educate me on this and a bit of a clarification. Now, I alluded originally and mention the United States of America. So where do we go there? Essentially an American design and we built the body. What? How does that work? Yeah, basically an American design, but they bodied for all sorts of companies. And this is a Buick uh, body made by Holden, upholstered by Holden and so on. To think that it was made here on Aussie soil, what an incredible looking car. It is obviously designed for the top end people back in the day, but how opulent. Absolutely, it's a beautiful looking motor car. It, the story goes that it used to run Sly Grog from Mildura down to Swan Hill. Oh, it was a booze runner. It was a booze runner. And apparently there was nothing on the road that could get anywhere near it. And not until the 60s, I believe, that they were caught. See, no horse. No horse back in 1928 could have caught this car. <laughs> but no, I think it might have been when the Studi Bakers came in to the police force that they were able to catch it. A magnificent looking motor car, it really is. You're just so lucky to have it here in your museum. We've, we've been blessed. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. In 2019, why not consider a Detroit tour with Fletch? Detroit, the automotive epicenter. It will leave you gobsmacked. Imagine experiencing where automotive history on a grand scale began. Stay in fine accommodation, taking in some of the best museums and private car collections on the planet. Book your 2019 Detroit tour with Fletch. 1300 146 392. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. Now, Neil, we were on our way to see a wagon. 
Oh, well, you've got to have a bit of a quick look at a Monaro. 50 years of Monaro this year, and I think this is about as good an example as you'll see. This is actually my fault. I love this car, and thanks for sticking up for me there, Neil, but it was myself that actually diverted Neil. I love this. This, this is an incredible car, 1969 HT. I don't know what it is. I think it goes back to the simplicity. Maybe it's the steel wheels and the narrow tyres. I don't know, but this is a gorgeous car. It's only just come up full re restoration. The people who own it, their father bought it brand spanking new, until he got ill and he put it in a container for about 20 odd years and they've pulled it out, two brothers, totally restored it and I think they've done a marvellous job. It just looks a million dollars and I think you're right. The simplicity of it is the thing that attracts you to it. It's exactly as it would have come out of the showroom and I think it's just a lovely example of an Aros. Some fantastic cars were made up, well performance cars up to of course the end with the VF Beautiful cars, safe cars, nice performing cars. But when we look at this, we we go back to that, that class of the time. I guess when they were new, people took them for granted. But they aren't made anymore. How many hundreds of times do I have to keep saying that? Mm. But we just look at the metal in these things, the shape, um, and I guess the time and effort that went into the interiors and the planning and I guess the ergonomics of the car that really make it stand out to what it is today. Absolutely. It sort of screams out, hey, look at me, doesn't it? It's, uh, the whole thing is just fantastic. And remember, it's 50 years old this year. Mm. So it's, uh, it's a great example of, uh, mm. of the engineering of the time. Mm. You know, we always look back and say, oh, don't you remember this? They're not half as romantic when you drive them as, they, as, as, as you think they were, but these are still a great example of the muscle cars of the time. Just unreal. And we're not looking at a 307 Chev spec here or a 350, a two, or not even a 308, Australian 308, the little 253. Yeah. And that's kind of neat as well because it was such an overshadowed engine because it just wasn't there in the realm of performance. But back in the time, two-door car, V8 engine, didn't really matter that you didn't have barrow loads of horsepower, you had the sound. Exactly, and that's what it was all about, wasn't it? And really the 253, as you say, was very much an overshadowed motor. It, uh, it performed brilliantly and the economy was extremely good. They were a good package in a Tirana. Oh, absolutely, yeah. They were a fantastic package in a Tirana. Well, here it is, the wagon, the 1953 FJ. Aftermarket wagon. You could walk down to Holden, buy a wagon for about £700, then take it down to Cordell's Paddle Works, and another 500 and so pounds later, you could have a FJ wagon. Lots of pounds back then, mate. Lots of, yeah. put, put the smile on the man's face. Yeah, it looked as roughly the price of an FJ was about one and a half years average salary. So that'll give you a bit of an idea of what it was worth. But uh, fabulous, I believe there's only three of these left in, in Australia. One in WA, I believe owned by Holden. Mm. And there's one up in New South Wales, I believe, sort of rusting away a bit, mm. but... This is a beautiful example of uh, this, and we've been very lucky to have the fellow leave it here for us. So. Now, this particular wagon as well, I guess, high on the option list, there's a few NASCO accessories on this one as well. Yeah, there's quite a lot of NASCO accessories. Um, anybody who had the money in the day always went down to the NASCO shop and filled her up with all sorts. So. And it's quite amazing because down the track with the options list, it might have been an extra $25 for a limited slip diff, but $120 for an AM radio. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it, eh? It's just amazing. When, when you look at it and put it all in perspective, you know, we look back now and you say, radio for 100 bucks, you wouldn't think twice, but 100 bucks was big money. And uh, yeah. This car back in its time, though, looking at it now, it, it's quite opulent. Uh, the bright work, again with Holden, what they did in the 50s with their die-cast work, their stainless steel work, that was 10 out of 10. Absolutely, and they always came out looking like a million dollars, didn't they? Isn't it interesting, too, that from the 48215 right through to, well, the last of the grey engine with the EJ, you really had one choice of engine, apart from the fact that they were, I think, 132.8 cubes and then a 138, but technically it was still that grey engine. So you had all these model cars, all the trim options, and your NASCAR accessories, but everyone just got away with that one engine. 
Absolutely. And that engine was just fabulous. As I say, give it spark and give it fuel and it must run. There's no question about it. In fact, we've got one here that's got 8,000 miles on it and to listen to it per, it just sucks you in. You know, we all, everybody says, oh, what's so great about the grey motor? You listen to it purr over and oh, it's absolutely, you fall in love with it. Well, Neil, it's come to that time of the day, my friend. I thank you so much uh, for putting the whole day aside and letting us film this episode here at the Trafalgar Holder Museum. You're an absolute icon. I love what you stand for. I love how you've set everything out here, your volunteers. Um, you, you do a fantastic job, mate, uh, to help keep the dream alive. Well, thank you very much, Fletch. It's been an absolute privilege to have you here. You're an icon in your own uh, in your own right, and we were delighted to have you. So, thank you very much, and I hope your uh, your viewers enjoyed it a half as much as I did today. Absolutely, you get a chance to come down to Trafalgar, come and see this guy, and. Uh He'll let you into his house. Now, on that note, I'm going to include Neil in the outro of today's show. So, as I say, at the end of every episode of Classic Restos, until next week, no matter where you're watching the show from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch. And I'm not. But we both thank you very much for watching. <laughs> You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters.